If you would like to see me play video games live, make sure you follow me on my Twitch Metatron Gemini channel. I've already gone live this week. I will go live again, possibly on Saturday and definitely on Sunday at 3 p.m. Central Time. I hope to see you there, number ones. Hello number ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking and this is a follow-up video to a video I've recently made called Chinese Armor vs Japanese Armor. If you haven't seen that video, I strongly advise you to pause this one, check that one out and then come back here. Now for those of you who have watched that video, well this is a follow-up because we're gonna focus on one of the kinds of Chinese armor, although I'll get back to that, but one of the kinds of Chinese armor that I've mentioned called Mountain Pattern Armor, a very mysterious kind of armor. So why is it mysterious? So the reason why mountain pattern armor is considered to be rather mysterious is because we have no archaeological evidence of this kind of armor. So did it exist? Well, this is going to be our first point here today. Well, in my opinion, it did exist. And that is because mountain pattern armor, although I have mentioned it on my Chinese armor section, it's not actually exclusive to China, as I have said on the original video. It's a kind of armor that we see represented both in Japan, in Vietnam, in Thailand, in Korea. Now, given most of the times this kind of armor is represented in a artistic artistic Buddhist context, but in China it is also mentioned in military application. And this links us to the second point of this video, which is the widespread of this kind of armor. So the armor was represented in many different countries. And to me, this is an indication that strongly suggests the fact that this is not just a kind of fantasy armor that they were drawing, but this is most likely going to be some kind of armor that was really used. Now, a thing I'd like to show you is that I am, for the purpose of this video, creating my own prototype. I'm making it with cardboard and I'm going to uh, tell you how I do it and why I'm doing it and what we can learn from an actual applicable experiential knowledge making the stuff. So, I am following the pattern created by Daniel Slope, uh, although I am making some minor changes according to my own opinions. But generally speaking, we are creating small plates that have the shape of the Chinese character from Mountain, which is pronounced Shan in Mandarin Chinese and Yama in Japanese. Now, these shapes originally, of course, they will be flat, but then we're going to make them convex. And you can do this by hand. Uh, it's not a difficult thing to do at all, but it is important and crucial to make them convex. When you make them convex, then the pattern and the mesh actually works because they all get attached to each other. And they do attach to each other in a very, very interesting way. To me, um, having made this now, uh, having created a small panel of mounted pattern armor, to me, this is a very solid intricate intrication mesh. Uh, it's interesting, it works very well, the, the scales overlap, and I believe it would grant a reasonable amount of protection if this was made of metal. And of course, the moment Noble wants to get access to smithing and metal smithing, I'm producing this. But for now, let's see what we can learn from the cardboard prototype. Personally, what I learn is that it's a robust, functional, interesting kind of armor which probably wasn't particularly difficult to produce because mail is a lot harder to produce than this and, and again mail is not particularly harder it's just labor intensive plate is the hard thing to produce and um, this will be a lot easier to produce than a full plate sort of armor this is going to take us to the fourth point of this video was it actually mail so a lot of people have been contacting me messaging me asking me questions about and they wanted to know more details about the manta pattern but quite a few people brought up a point that has been brought up by experts as well, uh, meaning that for some people uh, the representations we see in iconography of mountain pattern armor actually represents male. So it's basically just a, an artistic license. Now I strongly, strongly oppose this, um, op this opinion, this statement, and the reason being is that first it is true that the Chinese do represent male um, as scale sometimes, but I'd like to underline sometimes not all the time. There are many situations in which the Chinese represent male as what it is, male. Another case in which they use a very simple kind of scale, and I'd like to, uh, I'd like to underline this adjective, simple kind of scale to represent male in some drawing. And it's possibly something that they copied from the Persians, they also represented male as a scale. But again, it's a simpler version, because the reason why you would do that is because drawing scales like that uh, so simple scales, it's a lot easier than drawing very small rings, but the uh, mounted pattern system is quite intricate. So drawing that to avoid drawing male doesn't really make much sense. And the strongest argument that I have against this is an argument, it's, it's from a picture that I found in a, a site that I will leave in the description below that talks about mounted pattern armor. And it's a most likely a Ming dynasty kind of statue which represents a soldier. And this soldier is wearing both 
mail in the upper thigh protection uh, piece of armor and mount a pattern armor on his shoulders. So again, on the same statue, we see represented male and mount a pattern. To me, that settles down. It settles the argument. We have both on the same statue. So we know that there is a clear differentiation between male and mount a pattern. So no, I don't think that mount a pattern was a way to represent male at all. Now the fifth point is, so was it scale or lamella? Now if you're not familiar with the difference between a scale and lamella, I've got a dedicated video and again I'll put a link in the description below. But generally speaking, scale needs to be attached to a backing and it can be leather or fabric whereas lamella usually doesn't need that and it just works well, it has its own lacing and the lamella are attached one to each other and they don't need a leather backing. So was mounted pattern uh, lamella or was it scale? We don't know. Uh, we don't know what the statues are supposed to be wearing underneath the mounted pattern armor when we see it and that's the same for drawings. So unfortunately we don't have enough data to postulate a coherent hypothesis on that. Now another interesting point is that if you look at this picture for example, some people use this to state the idea that when we see mountain pattern in statues and drawings it actually represents textile, so a sort of drawing on top of textile that was worn on top of armor. Now I'd like to underline, of course we don't know, it could be, I'm not saying that they're, what they are saying is absolutely false, no it could be, maybe they are right, but for me it makes more sense that mounted pattern armor was actually metal scale and that is because in the Tang period we do have one mention into one of their lists that was listing 13 different kinds of armor where they mention mountain pattern scale and it's put underneath the section of metal armor. Now there are no drawings so we don't know if it was if it meant this kind of armor or another kind of scale but this does look like scale it could be scale it does look like metal like if you look at this picture here this this specific kind of hue usually represents iron and as you can see this picture here both soldiers are wearing lamella armor and on top of it they're both wearing a sleeveless coat. Now the guy on the left his coat has got mountain pattern the guy on the right his coat doesn't have a mountain pattern and it has very small lamella. Now I think it's absolutely no question that the guy on the right is wearing lamella both on the coat and underneath. So basically it has two layers of lamella armor and it is not unusual to have different sizes of lamella in the same suit. So it would be very strange that the guy on the left who is wearing basically the exact same style of coat would instead be wearing just a textile drawn kind of coat rather than a coat made of metal. Also again because that hue usually represents iron or steel. And as a final point, does it work? Would it work as protective as a protective garment? Now um, again this is a big debate, there's a big debate out there because apparently they have, and again who's this they I don't know, but in sight, whenever you read about Mount Patanama, they mention and they show pictures of people who have recreated the Mount Patanama based on the same pattern that I have re that I followed, and and then they they did it in metal, although unfortunately they don't tell us what metal, and and then they shot at it with arrows, but again they don't tell us what arrows if it was arrows from, from bows, from crossbows, where they period, what's the draw weight, they don't tell us anything, they just show us a picture where the arrow goes through and breaks the, the pattern and therefore making it supposedly uh, non-functional. So some people having seen this have said well then it's probably ceremonial but I don't think it was ceremonial and it's too easy um, I mean it's not it's too un unprofessional to just call it a piece of garment a piece of armor ceremonial simply because one test and dubious at best test was done and that doesn't tell us anything. First and foremost what metal did they use was it bronze was it iron was it steel and I think all of them would have been possible for mounted pattern armory, uh, armor absolutely. Secondly what's the draw weight of the bows and the crossbows and are they period because if they're not period crossbows and period bows again it doesn't mean anything to shoot at a piece of armor with a bow that has a draw weight of 300 years further in history doesn't prove anything also what's the distance uh, that they shot it at because again that changes considerably the results and late, last but not least and that's probably the most important part I believe the mountain pattern armor could have been a subsequent reinforcement layer of something else so it's definitely a kind of armor that you would wear 
uh, over something possibly padding maybe many layers of fabric maybe leather armor and maybe it was worn even uh, over lamella armor but whatever it was worn over it makes absolutely zero sense to just take a piece of a layer uh, of mounted pattern armor and it would be make zero sense as well with just mail and shot, shoot at it without anything underneath it you need to put it on top of a mannequin which which is wearing a uh, some padding and he's wearing fabric and he's wearing the clothes that they would have worn and in my opinion the mannequin should be wearing leather armor hide armor uh, rhinoceros for example or even uh, more lamella and then see what the pattern that we are using so the mountain pattern armor is adding to the equation this is how it would we would give justice to this kind of armor because it's how it looks uh, when you look at it in the statuary evidence so to cut a long story short i believe the mountain pattern armor existed i believe it did not represent male i think it was functional not ceremonial this is my opinion but let me know what your opinion is in the comments below and also don't forget to come and follow me on twitch to see me fight in for honor many other games in fact let me know in the comments below what games you'd like to see me play on streaming thank you very much noble ones for watching i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please remember thumbs up and if you're yet not members of this community become a noble one subscribe to my channel for more content from the metatron and remember the metatron has spread his wings goodbye